some questions from all india pg this year that is 2012 this may be distributed some of which we haven't got yet so if some of you can add on it will be better but definitely we are going to take care of around 16 questions in anatomy and we have one and a half hour with us the question number one which is on page number seven basically page number seven and that it is going to supply tongue muscles all tongue muscles are supplied by the hypoglossal nerve except the palatoglossus muscle. We know that this 12th nerve, the hypoglossal nerve, is supplying all the tongue muscles except palatoglossus because the tongue muscles develop in the occipital somites, tongue muscles develop in the occipital somites, whereas the palatoglossus is developing in pharyngeal arches. There's a difference. You have to tell that tongue muscles develop from the occipital somites, whereas the palatoglossus is developing in the pharyngeal arches. And the tongue muscles are supplied by 12th nerve, whereas the palatoglossus is supplied by vago accessory complex. Vagus accessory complex. So one question came recently asking same thing we'll be going on to that question as well but at the moment you should know that some muscles develop in the pharyngeal arches and some muscles develop at some other places like remember the eyeball and tongue muscles the eyeball and tongue muscles do not develop in pharyngeal arches the eyeball and tongue muscles they do not develop in the pharyngeal arches. Then where are they developing? We'll find out where their origin is. But uh, then we have added one information that maybe the tongue muscles do not develop in the pharyngeal arches, but one of the tongue muscles is developing in pharyngeal arch. And then the name of the muscle is palatoglossus. Okay. Anyway, that is one additional information. Here, the question is, Hypoglossal nerve injury. When you have this nerve injury, what happens is all the tongue muscles are going to be compromised, including genioglossus. So now the muscle genioglossus has been compromised. Genioglossus, what is the activity? It is aim the tongue. Aim the tongue. What do you understand by aim the tongue? It will move the tongue anteriorly, inferiorly, and uh, medially. So when there is 12th nerve injury, we understand that genioglossus muscle is a muscle of tongue which is compromised. What is this muscle doing? It is to aim the tongue. What is aiming the tongue? Taking it anterior, inferior and medial. Tongue protrusion basically. It is for the protrusion of tongue. Now you also have to understand that there are two of them. You know, there will be one genioglossus on each side. So if this is the midline, if this is the tongue, then we have genioglossus here, genioglossus there. There are two genioglossus and they will take the tongue anterior, you see. They will also take the tongue inferior, they will also take it medial. Medial, medial will get cancer. So whenever you are talking about the activity of genioglossus, where is it taking the tongue? Anterior, inferior and medial but medial medial get cancelled so the tongue will be basically going anterior and inferior now say the left nerve is not working if the left nerve is not working what will happen which muscle will be paralyzed the left muscle is now paralyzed say it is left hypoglossal nerve injury if it is the left hypoglossal nerve injury then you will see that one of the muscle is not working. Say this nerve, this muscle is not working. What will the other do now? It will take the tongue anterior, 
inferior and push it to the midline but it will keep pushing it to the midline and it will deviate to the side of the lesion so that is why you see that if there is left nerve injury and you ask the patient to protrude the tongue the tongue will be deviated to the left side why because left sided muscle is not there only right sided muscle is there so what the right sided muscle keep doing push the tongue medial 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 and cross the midline and go still more away from the midline and deviate towards the towards the left side basically or towards the side of lesion so what do you think about this question question number 1 is asking same thing hypoglossal nerve injury atrophy of the same side yes ipsilateral deviation of tongue yes loss of tactile sensation on anterior part of tongue no that is the answer that is the answer your answer is c why because it is mentioning loss of tactile sensation you see tongue tactile sensation on the anterior part of tongue is basically lingual nerve lingual is language the language is by tongue basically so lingual nerve branch of trigeminal 